Welcome to Android Authority on Air, the original Android Hangout show on Google+. I'm Derek Ross. And I am Scott Anderson. And I'm we Dan are, <laughs> We're joined with uh, Dan Charlton, John Franklin, Wookie, my main man, and uh, Nate Swan are all from Android Authority, guys. Uh, great to have you here. It's good we to have be a here, treat. Guys. We have a little treat this week. Nate is actually joining us from his Chromebook Pixel. And I don't know if we look ama as amazing as he does, but the video camera on it seems great from here. I, I, uh, I'm definitely impressed. Yeah, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice camera, that's for sure. So how do we look on that massive screen? Do we look all pixelated and like horrible or, or what? Well, you look horrible, but it's not because of the pixelation. <laughs> no, the screen's absolutely gorgeous. I'm blown oh, the away by it. All right, I see what you did there. <laughs> it took you a minute to catch on. An ugly joke. All right, I remember that. Remember, I can control. I can. I can mute you. You know. All right. Um, all right. You can so, always. You can always listen to us on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. This week, uh, Mobile World Congress, uh, you know, over in Barcelona, Android Authority was there. Our Joshua Vergara and Darcy Lacave were there tearing it up. We have tons of YouTube videos on our channel. You should check those out if you want to see a bunch of verses. There's a bunch of hands-on on, on uh, various different devices as well as uh, device reviews and everything on, on the website. Uh, our whole Mobile World Congress is uh, pretty in-depth. Uh, you know, and I I really like that intro, the Mobile World Congress intro. Uh, oh you guys no, that's a that? great intro. Yeah, it's great. It's a bull. It's a Mobile World Congress, uh, uh, Global Mobile Awards uh, bull, like rushing the Android uh, Authority logo, and it uh, it's awesome. You gotta check it out. All right, I'm so I'm gonna say real quick, just for like a second, Derek, aren't you just a little bit jealous after CES? Aren't you just a little bit jealous that we're not there? You know. No, I'm not. I had fun at CES. Uh, it, it sounds like you know, Mobile World Congress had a lot more goodies. Mm. Uh, it would have been nice to see some of the goodies. Um, but you know what? Uh, and big Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. All but right, I'm jealous. All right, I'm jealous. jealous. I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to play it down. I'm jealous. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> All right, so... We're going to talk about uh, Mobile World Congress, obviously, various phones and tablets and phone pads uh, and uh, with the Global Mobile Awards. And before we get to all that, let's, uh, let's talk about some, a hot topic this week. While Mobile World Congress was, was going on, uh, we're going to hit on some information that came out about Google versus Samsung. But before we get to that, um, let's hit uh, our, our normal app segment at the beginning of the show. So... You may have noticed a new icon show up on your Android device this week. A nice little green Google icon with a gear. Reminds that, me of like St. Patrick's Day. Anybody? Yeah, well, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Yeah. So it, it's the Google Settings app. Well, this and this is from the new Google Play Services 3.0 that rolled out. And Google Play Services 3.0, we, we've had it. Since 1.0, we've had it for a while. <laughs> um, it, it adds v no. various uh, APIs for for Android and, and and so forth, so you don't have to wait for a new version of Android to roll out so you can get them. So this latest one was a big update for integration for Google Plus. Um, you can now, if you're a brand, you can install apps directly from your site. You have a, a link to sign in for Google Plus. The app automatically downloads, installs to your device. You can, similar to like a Facebook sign in and a, a Twitter sign in, you can now sign in with Google Plus as well and it can you know, steal all your data from you know all your friends' names. It doesn't know your friends' circles. They specifically tell you that, but it will know all your friends' names from that circle. Or you can choose to not share anybody. It will know zero of your friends' names, which is very nice. The, the few apps I've done, I was like, I'm not giving them my friends' data. Go down there and click only allow this. You know, only steal, take my information. Don't take my friends. Or you can create a circle with like you know one person in it or no people in it and share it to that circle. A little little tidbit. Um, that's cool. I, I like the integration. You know me. I'm a big Google Plus fan. I, I, I What like other that. things integrate with it? Um, well, a apps. So you can now sign into, let's say, uh, for example, Fancy is an app that allows you to sign in with Twitter, Facebook, and now you can sign in directly with your Google Plus credentials. So it's, it's another, you know, 
more secure experience. The apps can be now personalized when you sign in. It can say, "Hey, Derek, how you doing?" And you know, the, it, it, it's nice. I, I like it. So, yeah, how it's, is it it's, different from the the web apps that let you sign in with your Google account already? Well, the, the Google account right now will be able to look at your your contacts, would be able to look at your email address and see your name and so forth. But this will have access to your history, your your history API, and will allow your apps to do things as on Google Plus. If you if you share, you can view directly into the app, uh, such as you know a purchase link, view a product that somebody's sharing. If somebody shares maybe a game score, you click on the view, it takes you right to the game score, something like that. It, it it's a writable Google Plus API, which the regular Google account. Auth doesn't allow writing to Google Plus, and this one does. So it's a writable API, I guess. Is the long story short. So I guess my real question is, what's the purpose of having both? I'm going to assume that eventually it would be phased out. You won't need both. That's just me making an assumption. But why would you have both? There's there's no need to have both. Now, some people I saw around the web complaining, saying. Now they have an, an, a whole other icon. Why didn't they just use the Google or the Android settings where your <laughs> Google account is already there? Well, that would require a new, a new version of Android. And since they can't just push a new settings.apk to every device, since every OEM basically, you know, breaks their own. Makes their own. Yeah. So they had to do it this way. And this is the whole entire reason that the Google services exist. So they can push new features without pushing out a whole new version of Android. Really though, people should be happy as Google continues to abstract Google services into standalone APKs that are in the market, delivered through the market. It means you're going to get a much more consistent access layer to Google services. Even if you're not running the same version of Android, if you're running Kindle, if you're running, you know, Gingerbread or ICS or Jelly Bean or even iOS, you're getting the same sort of access layer to the various cloud services that Google provides. It's a, it's um, a very it's a very modular approach, and I definitely agree with that over having to roll it into operating system upgrades. Yeah, it, it's good. Um, so I, I mentioned uh, Fancy. It's a, an app that honestly, I, I guess, has been around for a while. I honestly never heard about it before. Never used it until I said, "Oh wow, I can sign in to to this app." <laughs> you used it just so you could sign in with Google. Yeah, yeah, but 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 actually, Dan, it actually, I got some good out of it. Um, I actually spoke with their web developer. I actually a little backstory. I'll ramble for a minute. You know, I like to ramble. I actually had an a uh, issue with their website, and like. You know, me being an angry, irate customer, I took to Twitter, or Google Plus, and yelled about it. And their their, their developer actually contacted me and said, "So we never had anybody do what you were trying to do. We fixed our bug. We like Android Authority. Here's ten ten dollar coupons to give away to your viewers. So, thank coupons. you. Yeah, so you guys benefit from me uh, finding a bug. So we're not going to give it away this show. I'm actually going to do an app review. Uh, is, I've been using the app a lot, just you know, playing around with it. It's kind of it like fancy. It, it, it is. It is pretty <laughs> fancy. It, uh, it, it's 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 hollow. It so it's a hollow app. So what, you know, you don't need to say anything else, right? It's it's cool. I like it. Uh, so yeah. So uh, pay attention the next few days from Android Authority. When I get some time to review the app. I'm going to post the app review, and then you'll have a chance to win ten bucks to to buy something. Uh, what does it do? It's a social network. Uh, it's kind of like Pinterest meets Amazon affiliate program. I mean that, that that's really the best way to put it. You can pin your own hmm. things called fancying them, and you can use it to buy and sell things and make money with referrals, which you kind of do with Amazon. It, I'll go, you know what? How about you find out what it is when I do the app review? Yeah, why don't you just like wait? It sounds for like it. something that I wouldn't understand even if I. It sounds. It sounds like something that Dan wouldn't do. This is why we don't. Get well, I mean, it sounds like something for people that are selling things, which I'm I've, not. Seen, so I've seen. I really a, don't know anything about selling things. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, so moving on. Tangent. Moving on. All right, so so let's talk about uh, what we you know came here to talk about. We're not going to talk about things that Dan doesn't like. We're going to talk about uh, Google well, versus Samsung. Like, finally. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, we're, we'll we'll talk about Mobile World Congress in a little bit. Uh, let's let's do some uh, some Android ecosystem stuff here. So let's talk about Google versus Samsung. Uh, this this past week, 
reports came out from the Wall Street Journal that Google was worried over Samsung, and I, I guess that's that's rightly so. I mean, Samsung is huge. They're they're a massive dominating force in Android. So last year, Samsung shipped more than 200 million devices more than their cl the closest competitor. 200 million more than the closest competitor. That, that's huge. Uh, there's been previous reports the past so many months that Galaxy is becoming a household name. That people were searching for Galaxy more than searching for Android. Well, you know that that report that doesn't mean anything to me personally because the most popular phone is called Galaxy. So you're going to be searching for that popular phone. You're not going to search for Android. So Plus that, 47 that, other variants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I yeah. that. That report, I'd, I'd just say, okay, somebody... Well, how many people search for the word Android. droid instead of Android? Yep. <laughs> yeah, Wait, so... not called droids? So, so no, why, in fact, that why, name is owned by Lucasfilm. So, so why is Google worried? Could it be that someday Samsung could come and say, listen, we're pushing this much of, of your product, we're making this uh, amount of mobile money mobile advertising money, we now want a larger chunk of the change. Right now they get roughly 10%, so they could come out and say, okay, we want 15%, 20%, whatever the case may be. They could demand more money, and if Google says no, then they could say, okay, well, we already have this massive user base, so we're just going to fork Android, and we're going to do our own thing. And they could go the way of kind of like uh, Amazon did with uh, the Kindle line. You know, Sam Droid. Sam or Android. <laughs> or what they could do is they could do the bait and switch. They could get their their Tizen, you know, operating system up mm -hmm. to snuff, and then bait and switch and call it Galaxy, and everybody would be like, you know what? And they could do that, and the average consumer probably wouldn't really realize a lot of things. Yeah. But uh, I I don't see them doing that. I who knows? They they could they could they could uh, fork Android and make it look like Tizen Tizen, and eventually just use that. Who knows? But. So, so what do you guys think? Should Google be worried about Samsung's dominance? Is this something that you know that that Larry and uh, Sergey are having nightmares about? You know, or is this you know not not a big deal? What do you guys think? What's your as take? As long on as the devices have the Play Store and everything that Google can make money off of, Google is a okay. They're happy about it and they make money off of it. The more devices that they can get into people's hands that have all of Google services and um, Chrome and are browsing the web is a win-win for Google. So any way phone manufacturers want to change it, whether it's good or bad, is good for Google. Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of ignore what Google's real core business is. It doesn't really matter if somebody uses iOS or Android in any form factor. The only point that Samsung becomes a huge threat to them is that people, if if Samsung gets good enough services that actually tie them to Samsung phones, and that hasn't become the case because Samsung services just honestly suck. Look at S Voice. Look at they don't have any kind of media services or anything that can really lock people in. And you know, HTC and Motorola used to be in this exact same position. They were in a dominating position, and because Android is so interchangeable and so open to competing different types of services. People can easily, you know, if Samsung trips up, it's nothing to move over to a Motorola or HTC because if you're in the Google ecosystem, you can migrate and not miss a beat, really. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, I think, I think a couple points, slash a couple points are, it's really too soon. People haven't really been adopting Samsung. Samsung has been around that long. They're not that huge for that long, um, first of all. Second of all, a big selling point to Tizen is that you can run Android apps via open mobile. Well, look to Google to shut that down real quick if it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I want to say about that is if you believe that Samsung with Tizen is somehow a bigger deal than Google with Android and Motorola, you're crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, that leads into a very good point, Nate. So is that part of the reason, you know, that these Google X phone or Motorola X phone rumors are coming out? Is this hopefully a way for Motorola to, you know, start – Getting back into the market to come out with some, you know, some some bombs really and, and shake things up, you know, and, and hopefully keep Samsung in check. Well, one of the first things that Google said was we bought Motorola for their patents, and then one of the first things they did after that was take a Motorola executive out and put a Google executive in. So they're they're not running them as a separate entity. 
and and then uh, and then what a, a month or two ago, sometime in the past, so many months, the, a formal agreement was reached to not use the Motorola patents to go after to go after uh, Apple. So those That's patents not that, accurate. How is that not accurate? Because that's not at all what the agreement was. They agreed to not actively seek injunctions for people violating their friend patents. They did yeah, not, was a brand not go after Apple because actually under the terms of their agreement, Apple is totally available to be sued over them and seek injunctions because Apple is refusing a license at any rate. And they've said so in public court documents. When you refuse to take a license for a friend patent at any rate, you're still totally liable for an injunction. Thank you, Dan. I was under the impression that the, the <laughs> Fran patents could no longer be used against Apple. Yeah, there's a list of like 14 disqualifying exceptions, of which Apple is breaching like six. So there are, there are some, but, so but not with, all of them. With regards to the X phone coming to save the day, I mean, Google's always been looking for that phone to, you know, get into a lot of people's hands, and they haven't had a really haven't had one compared well, to the size of Samsung. I think, I think well, nobody that, has compared to the size of Samsung. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right, and I think that you know they, they crossed us up with the we bought them for their patents to protect ourselves kind of thing. But I, I don't believe you know I didn't believe it then, and I don't believe it now. I think that they bought them to have a much more tighter control over the entire spectrum from you know supply chain to everything else, all the way down the line. I think they they it was kind of an end around play to Samsung. They knew what they were doing. Yeah, I mean, I think they definitely did buy them for their patents. I think that the other stuff is more or less the fringe benefit. Absolutely. And the reason to buy them for their patents and then keep them rather than buy them for their patents and then sell off the corpse. Right. Yeah. What would be really awesome if the X phone was vanilla and all the phones were vanilla and that could be a selling point and that could be a very, very appealing thing that you could buy Motorola phones for. But yeah. I, mean, I, think I don't think that's going to happen, but... I think the other thing with Samsung is that really they're, they're a house of cards, right? I mean, they're hugely successful and they're selling millions of devices, and I don't mean to diminish that, but they're cheap plastic that, of course, they're selling millions of them because they're freaking 3D printing them off the lines. Like, they're candy, right? right. Like, they're cheap plastic, it's, it's and true. yet they're selling at the same price as an HTC-built phone that's made out of, you know, unibody aluminum. Or Did you see HTC? Ridiculous Land today, and whatever nonsense that they had on the One S, right? Like these are premium devices selling at six hundred dollars versus Samsung's cheap plastic at six hundred dollars. Dan, did, did you see HTC's post today on Google Plus? They said no. metal greater than plastic, and then they yeah. then they then exactly. they then they pictured the the new HTC One. That was I mean that was a direct slam at Samsung. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it should be really. I mean, those it should be. Those Samsung phones are so flimsy. And, I mean, they can kind of make up for it by saying that they're some of the lightest phones around. But really, who who's picking up a phone and thinking, this is so heavy, I can't stand this? Yeah, Rather than... I am. Dude, I'm not that speed. strong. <laughs> All right, so... Samsung's getting to the point where they're so light that it's uncomfortable, right? Like, I don't want to yeah. feel like I'm holding a piece of paper when I'm holding my cell phone. That'd be kind of cool, actually, so... So to get you... back on track here... You guys don't think that Google should have anything to worry about, but no. but it's nice to have Motorola in your pocket to help push things along. One thing I wanted to say real quick is that I don't, and when it comes to Android, I don't want to see anybody become Android's Apple. I don't want to see anybody be in the in the situation where they're the only company that people are looking to, because that is just going to cause everybody else to stagnate. All they have to do is kind of hit the status quo, and everybody's fine. That as makes sense. As everybody's in good competition, people are going to keep innovating, and that's yeah, that, that makes sense, Wookie. That's that, that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, Mobile World Congress, you know what we're here for, right? So, uh, as Wookie said, you know we didn't go this year. Obviously, we're here, but right now, uh, Darcy and Josh are flying back. Uh, Josh actually is probably flying over PA right now. I talked to him a little bit ago, and he was in New York City. So, hey, Josh, wave to you up there. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah. So, phones. The, 
there was a lot more excitement, as Wookie said, compared to, to CES. We, we saw the Optimus G Pro. We saw the Lenovo K900, the Asus phone pad, a Firefox OS reference device. ZTE had a device. And uh, out of all those, anybody have a favorite, any favorite phone they saw this week? Um, I just want to say that it was around midnight the other night, and Darcy was messaging me in a tizzy. He is a big Note 2 guy, and he loves that Optimus G Pro, so that's a scary phone. I, I saw his review on that, and he actually said that. He's like, huh, I might uh, might be getting an upgrade soon, you know? He, yeah, was he said it was the best phone he'd ever seen. Really? He was absolutely giddy. It was weird. So, so let's talk about that. So the Optimus G Pro is the... Uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 2 of LG without the S Pen. I mean, it it looks, for argument's sake, it looks exactly like it. <laughs> I mean, the, the, down to the way the buttons are laid out. And you know, I mean, it. If to be honest with you, if you held two of the devices side by side, stood back a few feet, you'd probably, and, you know, covered up the logos. Obviously, you'd, you'd yeah, be the like, big hey, Verizon look. logo. <laughs> well, yeah, cover up the massive Verizon logo. Okay, use the GSM version, you know, and, and you'd be like, "Oh, wow, there's two Galaxy Notes." You know, they 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 look the same, in my opinion. Uh, so, the Optimus G Pro comes with a 1.7 quad core Snapdragon 600, and maybe that's why that thing flies. Maybe that's why Darcy was such a fan of it. it I mean, it that's that, that's a, that that's a same processor that's going to be coming in the uh, HTC One, the Snapdragon 600. So, is it thinner uh, width-wise than the Note 2? I think it has less of a bezel, yeah. Because that was one of I, I think that's one of uh, Darcy's complaints is the Note 2 is so wide. Well, it does have a better screen. It's a t it's a 1080p screen, 5.5 uh, inch LCD, and that that right there is is a winner. You know that that's a it's a it's a 1080p screen. Uh, Note 2 does not have that. <laughs> um, it it's going to come with Android 4.1.2. Yeah, I know Android 4.2 is out, but we probably won't see a whole lot of phones come with Android 4.2, unfortunately, for a little bit. Uh, chances are LG is going to update it, you know, quote unquote, soon. But it it looks like a nice phone. Uh, I would. It looks exactly like you know. I hate to keep saying it. it. Really, I mean, it looks like TouchWiz. Really, it does. Their Nature UI, isn't that what it's called? Nature. TouchWiz. Yeah, yeah what TouchWiz calls it. Well, when uh, no, LG, LG's UI. What, what I forget what that's called. I can't remember what it's called. But it it it, it it's it. That's it a good thing like we can't remember. It, yeah. it looks like a TouchWiz. Yeah. But, yeah. but but anyways, it it's a it's a nice device. It really. If if you're somebody that needs a, a pen, an S Pen, you know. Uh, then you're not going to have that, but you're going to have a better screen. You're going to have a better processor, and you know, uh, same roughly, roughly same other specs, storage and uh, and RAM. But, John, you have a Note too. Looking at this device, are you jealous? Not really. He's always jealous. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't. It's not that uh, the hardware isn't great. I just don't trust LG to push out software updates. <laughs> right? You know, I mean that that. That kills it for me. So. You really intend to run the native software? Well, I mean, even the developer communities for LG just aren't there That's compared to point. Samsung too. If it, it if LG on the phone, but if, if LG if LG proves themselves to improve on their if they improve on their track track record, then it would be a, a device that's worth having to me. But I, I just don't I just don't see it out of them yet, so it's not tempting me. All right, I hear, so I hear LG so we have Another device here, Lenovo K900. We first saw this at Showstoppers at uh, CES. Uh, Wookie and I were there. We got to we got to touch it. We got to check it out, and it it's a massive phone. Uh, you know, 5.5 inches, 1080p screen, yada yada yada. And the neat thing about it, it you know, we they they weren't really telling us a whole lot at CES. They said you know it has an Intel, and there was rumors that it's dual core. We didn't really know a whole lot. I tried talking to the Intel guy. And uh, and Wookie and I were sitting there hammering, and we're like, you know, so why is Intel now able to to use a dual core processor? Because six months ago, in, Intel said Android wasn't ready, and they came back with a really awesome answer, basically saying Android's still not ready, but our processors are good enough to fix that. Is basically what he said. By so, which they really yeah. mean six months ago we couldn't hit the power footprint on dual core, and now we finally can. <laughs> well, he, whatever they did, so. They they did something right because the reason the whole reason we're mentioning this device is because 
holy hell is it fast. So so Darcy slapped Antutu on it. It's a Intel Clover Trail 2.0 gigahertz dual core and with hyper threading. With, with, with hyper-threading. So if you know anything about benchmarks, a lot of people do, some people don't, it scored over 25,000, which pretty much blows everything away today. Uh, now, in comparison, the Tegra 4 got 36,000, but the Tegra 4 is a little different architecture, and it's coming from somebody that has been in the Android you know, uh, business a lot longer than Intel has. Intel, this is their first, you know, major foray with the dual core. So that, also, that's why this is such a big deal. For another roughly four months, at least. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, like Dan said, yeah. Intel, what is there now? Well, let, let's compare yeah. that with the Tegra Four. That's not going to be here until. Next. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I thought you were talking about the Intel. Well, the Intel got the twenty five hundred. The Tegra Four got thirty six. And Qualcomm yeah. claims that their Snapdragon eight hundred that's going to come out at about the same time as the Tegra Four beats the Tegra Four. But it's, it's side by side looking at it from a pure Intel standpoint, I'm giving them a you know a high five. You know, oh definitely, they've come a long way. It's great to have a, it, it a third flies. person in the game. I think uh, one thing that uh, looks to be happening is a lot of your A15, you know, like Samsung and uh, Nvidia too, are really lagging behind what they initially thought they would be able to get these yep. chips out, and. Intel is really moving at the pace that they're getting better at becoming power efficient a lot faster than these OEMs for ARM are getting better at making their chipsets faster. So, and that makes sense because Intel's been making processors for forty some years. Yeah, mm-hmm. so and they, got, they have the facilities and and R and D to do that and do it correctly. So, right right now, Intel's competing on pretty even ground with the process, and they are due for. A completely new atom architecture and moving down yeah. in lithography in the next year. They're on an accelerated release. There, yep. you know, you talk about Intel with they tick and then they talk. They're about get, getting ready to talk. So, yeah, they can move down process the process size a lot faster than they are manufacturers. They're going to get to 14 nanometers when ARM is dropping to 20. Yeah, and that's 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 really huge for the next few years, really. So we're going to talk about some other devices here, move on. But those of you that are watching uh, live or listening or watching later, go ahead and leave a comment. Let us know what your favorite device from Mobile World Congress 2013 was. Was it a tablet? Let us know which tablet. Was it a phone? Let us know which phone. Just so we can kind of you know, see, what, uh, see what's out there in, in terms of you know, what, what you guys like, what you didn't like. And we'll, uh, we'll look at the comments in a little bit and, uh, and uh, talk about you know, what do you guys think? Um, so moving on to another device here, let's talk about a 7-inch phone. Um, <laughs> the uh, the Asus phone pad is basically a Nexus 7 um, in terms of, you know, size and, and look. <laughs> um, and not at all internals. But, yeah, the internals aren't. Uh, you know, obviously it's an Intel processor, a 1.2 gigahertz Atom processor, and, you know, the Nexus 7 is Tegra 3. But it looks, to me, it, it looks like a Nexus 7. So it, it's a phone. And if you watch Asus's promo video about talking about it, they basically said that you shouldn't have to crowd around a phone, to, to a tiny screen to show you know, friends and family a picture or a video or something. You know, you shouldn't have to hold a f- or carry a phone in your hand and then when you want to do something bigger, go grab your tablet. You shouldn't have to worry about carrying two devices. So why not use a 7-inch tablet as a phone? And that's how they came up with the phone pad. It's an HSPA Plus uh, device, uh, and their promo video shows people walking around with this, you know, where's my Nexus 7 at? There it is. You know, walking around with a... No massive, they're looking like uh, this. Yeah, they're like, "Can you hear me now?" Hey, you know, I mean, like, that Wait, does that phone make you suddenly there? older? Just so, to be clear, you can currently <laughs> do that with an HSPA Plus enabled Nexus Seven. Yes, uh, you, you can, can do it with a Wi-Fi only as have, well. But you have to yes, have Groove so IP. Have range of Wi-Fi. Yeah, you can well, pull out the you can pull out the Zach Morris phone and look like Saved by the Bell all over again. Yeah, if you so feel like it. now with the HSPA hey, Plus Nexus like Seven, you can do this already with Groove IP. You have to use Groove IP to do that, or some, or another VoIP service. So, and some people are, have already done this. It, it's nothing new, but that's you know the, the Nexus Seven is marketed as a tablet, whereas the phone pad is marketed as a as as a phone. So it is a little different. It's something that we you know, no one's really done yet. 
Um, so I, what I want to know is if you're watching, listening, uh, smoke signals, however you're tuning in, would you walk around, walk around the street with a seven-inch phone up to your face, or you know, or do you use Bluetooth? You know, is it who cares? Do you just gonna keep your phone in your pocket, your purse? You know, or uh, it's massive, so some you know some people have smaller pockets. Women, you know, you're not gonna be able to put the, this in your pocket. So, <laughs> what you know, you gonna, what, what are you gonna do? Uh, walk around uh, with Bluetooth? You gonna use it? Uh, I'm 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 curious what you know the average uh, consumers. Uh, Thinking of that, if somebody on YouTube commented, "No." <laughs> if, uh, what I, what I want to see Google is Glass a, catches on. The meme of Grumpy Cat, like you know, like in, in the Asus uh, phone pad, and him just being like, "No." <laughs> is this another one of the devices that they're only planning to sell in Asia? There, Europe, Asia. Yeah, there's no plans at this time for you. <laughs> no way! I'm yes. shocked. <laughs> now that doesn't mean that you can't buy it and use it here on a GSM network. I don't know what the, if if the. Uh, I haven't looked at the radios. It's, I don't it's know. plus. It should probably run on T-Mobile, but it's getting to the point where nobody in America is going to sell anything that doesn't work on LTE. So it'll be interesting. So yeah, let us know. Will you uh, walk down the street or, or with a seven inch, a seven inch or up by your face, or will you use Bluetooth or not at all? I'm waiting for the eleven inch phone pad personally. Just <laughs> they'll get a, they're going to have to put a handle on the back of it so you can hold it up like this, but. Uh... <laughs> I've After seen those that. third party. They make them already. Those you make know, you can go ahead and practice now. Go and pull out your Nexus 10 or whatever 10-inch tablet yeah, exactly. you have and, and walk around. You know. That'd be just awkward. Get a VoIP app on your Pixel. Just walk around with that. There Picture you go. walking yes. into like an, like an elevator and just having the thing and just talking on it. Be well, you know what, huge. Nate? There you go. Do you have the LTE version of the Pixel? No, but I should get it and then kind you of should get it and then just open up like Gmail on it and I can just walk around. Well, with yeah, yeah, get get L, you know, just just yeah, get just use Gmail, Gmail straight out of the browser. Gmail. Calling. Yeah, walk gonna call around Daniel. town. I'm gonna call Dan and say I'm doing it, buddy. I'm doing it <laughs> with your 100 <laughs> megabytes of Verizon service. <laughs> yeah, so you go. Yeah, watch your data. It'll be like one call, like call for about three minutes. All right, so let's move on. Talk about another Mobile World Congress device. So Firefox was there. Uh, and I love that guy. His accent's awesome. He has he had I don't remember his name, but uh, he has red hair and he just reminded me of the Firefox logo. Like the whole entire time he was talking, <laughs> he had like weight curly hair down to here, and the whole time he's talking, I'm like, this dude, this dude's perfect for Firefox. Like, <laughs> it, it, okay, so joking aside, so really it, hopes he doesn't see this. <laughs> I hope That's he so mean. I hope he does. He was awesome. Um, he he said that the Firefox OS is going to be targeting um, emerging markets where smartphones are re really expensive, and basically, you could people the average consumer can only afford a feature phone. And what Firefox wants to do is they want to replace the feature phone because they want you to do more than play Snake <laughs> and uh, text message, and they 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 want to be a cheap alternative that allows you to do more. I like really that. after Bada, not Android. You think that's what they're going after? Well, if that's the if they're going for the, like the pseudo feature phone, like quasi smartphone, that's Bada. Yeah, or Tizen, Tizen. Yeah, but well, I think Samsung wants Tizen, Tins and Tines. However, how do, how do we say that name? There you go. Leave us in the comments. How yes, do you, how yes. Do you... Somebody in the comments tell us how to pronounce that, please. The phonetic Tizen. spelling. Tizen, Tizen, and, Tizen. And, and phonetically spell it out. <laughs> and and you'll win, uh, you'll, you'll I think win the a, proper uh, pronunciation five. for that is touch jizz. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so it starts with a T and ends with something similar. All right, so, so let's talk about the grand memo. Memo? <laughs> the the grand memo, memo from. Uh, yeah, there you go. See? The grand Nemo. The grand, I've seen that movie. Grand Nemo. No, the Nemo is those Asus pads that never exist. <laughs> <laughs> I, so the grand, the grand memo from uh, from ZTE. So is it or ZTE if you're from the rest of the world, or oh. ZTE if you're Darcy? He's the only person I've ever heard say is no a a and Canada. the Nokia dude. I live close enough to Canada to get advertisements on the radio for the BlackBerry Z10 all the time. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> the official oh, press right. release for the Z Grand Memo. The, the ZTE, yeah, it uh, it said that it was uh, a Snapdragon 800 
processor, and immediately as soon as I saw the press release, I messaged the number one hardware guy that I know, Dan Charlton. I was like, holy snikes, Dan, this comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800. It's the world's first device to have an 800. And Dan just replies, you know, grumpy cat. He's like, no. And I was like, no, Dan. That's Dan. probably a typo. I was, I was like, Dan, what do you mean no? He said, well, that's not coming out for months. I said, dude, it's all over the press release. It's and not we're... sampling to manufacturers yet. They certainly aren't debuting a device that has it since they can't get their hands on one. So, so Dan being Dan, he's, he keeps telling me, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. I said, hey, they put it in the press release. He said, no, it's a, it's a uh, typo. They meant to say 600. I said, okay, so I'm going down through the press release specs, and I get down to the radio, and I copy and paste the radio to Dan, and I said, oh, so I guess it's not coming with that God radio that was announced. It's going to be every LTE band. And Dan says, wait a second, that radio is the same radio that's in the S4 Pro. Hmm, something doesn't <laughs> jive here. And, uh, then, and then the next day, a couple of, uh, actually Android Police reported it uh, officially uh, first. Uh, Android Police put Antutu on it and did some testing and came back and saw that it was what Dan had said the day before. So Dan was right all along that it was a it was an S4 Pro, and what was funny is people were actually contacted Qualcomm and said, "Hey, so you put out an 800?" And they're like, "No, no, 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 it's a 600." And then it turned Dan's out to be an wrong. S4 Pro. <laughs> I'm sure wrong. they don't know. They just said, uh, "No, no, it's definitely not an 800. They probably meant 600." <laughs> yeah. So you know, was it? Uh, it was, I don't know. It was interesting. Their press release also said it had two gigs of RAM, but it only had one gig of RAM. Like, who like, is in charge of that? It's I mean, like, PE. Come what do you on. expect? <laughs> I mean, it's like ridiculous. So, was it the PR guy? Why do you guy think we're all making fun of, of NVIDIA for having ZTE as their only signing partner for the Tegra 4? Yeah, this car has 20 gallons of gas, you know, a capacity of 20, and you get on the road, it has two. Oh. <laughs> Oh so, yeah, sorry. We we meant two. It was yeah. that was a typo. Somebody was zero when they weren't supposed I to. I ran out of gas. I thought it was two gallons with like an eighteen gallon reserve or something. Man. <laughs> All right. So so let's talk about some Mobile World Congress tablets. Uh, we have the Asus PadPhone Infinity, which is like the PadPhone, the PadPhone Two. It's a phone that slaps into a tablet shell and. Becomes an awesome tablet, and then you get infinite battery life. Yeah, right, it's. Right. A, you should actually check our review actually out on YouTube on that. Um, Darcy talked, uh, you know, about like eight or nine minutes or so with uh, their their marketing team, and you get a lot of hands on on the uh, on the device and a lot of information about it. it it's it keeps getting better. Uh, in the beginning, you know, the pad phone people complained it was kind of big, kind of bulky, kind of heavy. It's been getting better and better and better, and. Now it's up to version infinity, so that means it's good because higher is better according Possibly to Bill Gates. have another version now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, infinity plus one. Well, infinity and beyond. You know, like there's gonna be they're gonna come out with the the uh, the, the pad phone Buzz Lightyear or something. You're just gonna have to pick a larger infinite set. <laughs> uh, so uh, Galaxy Note 8.0, we knew that was coming. We heard, you know. It leaked all over the place. It was on Picasa, where Android phones go to, you know, tell their tale of. Um, does anybody think? Existence. Does anybody think it looks like a little, like a little child's toy that you would buy in Toys R Us, like the child's like children toy plastic Samsung product? Yes. No, no, no. I, I, I mean more so than they typically do. <laughs> it looks like a Galaxy S3 that they decided mm -hmm. to blow up. Exactly, cheap plastic ape, much it's like more a toy. curved and childlike. Yes, designed for humans, as opposed to everybody else that designed things for I don't know. Okay, so I, I would think that children would use this, and since you can use it as a phone, think of a t uh, like a three foot kid walking around using this as a phone. That'd be crazy. My, you know what? I'm gonna buy one for my son. Are you? Just to see him use it. <laughs> that would be the funniest thing ever. <laughs> no. Holding it up. Take so, some pictures. Send it back. <laughs> so, so the reason that Samsung came out with this, everybody thinks, is. Eight inches is roughly the same size as the iPad Mini. iPad Mini is like seven point eight, seven point nine. I don't know. Have we forgotten the fact that this is not the first eight something inch tablet from Samsung? 
or any or but that's know, but Motorola had an eight inch tablet. But this is their new one, oh, and that's of why because they release a product and then Apple releases a similar one, and then Samsung <laughs> updates their existing product. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, Samsung is ripping Apple off. Well, they're not ripping them off, but they're competing, and that, and that's exactly what I'm saying. They're that's their this is their answer, you know, with their their note line. So, uh, is it awesome? Do you want one? Eh. I I I'm not down with the whole. Uh, I thought you were getting one for your kid. Oh, that was a lie. I don't believe anything I <laughs> don't say. Don't lie on air. It's like <laughs> we're under oath. Um. So, <laughs> most interesting tablet besides the the uh, phone pad, I think, was HP Slate. Just because HP, this is their foray. This is their first time getting into the officially getting into the Android market space, and. I think it's cool. You're getting, you know, the HP brand name that everybody knows has been making computers for years. Yeah, touchpad might not have been the best tablet on the planet, but their laptops are not the best laptops on the planet either. You know, but yeah. everybody, you know, when it comes to HP or Dell or whatever, insert major computer manufacturer here, they're all roughly the same until somebody has a problem with them. And then they hate them, and then they love another company. That that's really I'll, how it is. I'll tell you why it's a bad tablet. Freaking, look at it compared to the Nexus Seven. Okay. Thirty dollars mm -hmm. more. So the HP Slate Seven uh, comes in at one sixty nine. Yep. So the Nexus Seven is thirty dollars more. Okay. So the, the there's no GPS, no no NFC. As no three, GPS, no NFC. You're right. Three megapixel rear camera. People are gonna like the fact that it has a micro SD card. People, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of people hated on the Nexus Seven because they wanted more space. They said, "Oh, eight yeah. eight megs, two or eight gig, and you know, sixteen gig." And they, so that'll be a selling point for people that you know want more space or want to throw in that you know sixty four gig or whatever. Um, one gigabyte of RAM. Yeah, but uh, Nexus. I mean, at, at, you, you know, know what Nexus else Seven. One gigabyte of RAM. The Evo, the original one. Yeah, yeah one gig does not cut it anymore. No. It doesn't. I mean, granted, the Nexus 7 has one gig of RAM, too. So. Uh, yeah, exactly. but it's beautiful. The Nexus 7 has one gig of RAM. That's what I said. Now, the screen, eh, 1024 by 600, so Ouch. it's competing with the Kindle Fire for uh, 159. Ouch. Ugh. That's what I'm thinking. You know, it, it's a, the Kindle Fire is a little lower My spec. My cell phone has a better resolution than that. It, it's a it's a cheap tablet. It's nothing more, you know. And we we also at uh, Android Authority uh, YouTube channel. You can check out the hands on there and first look there. And it looks like a nice device, you know. It it is also running almost stock Android. That is if, nice. If somebody which is another selling point for us people. It has and it has Beats Audio, which I know it's a lot nothing. of people hate Absolutely Beats nothing. Audio and some, but some people love it. Yeah, so just I don't know why, but yeah, some people do. There's also I, I a really consider good it a negative. That what's going to be in stores, whereas the Nexus Seven you can't get in stores usually. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, you can go pick one up at Staples or Best Buy. Yeah, but nobody has a Staples Everybody by them. Is there. <laughs> I I live in the middle of nowhere, and I have a Staples here. Uh, I, I don't have a Staples. I have a Staples here. here. I'm in the middle. Of if I had a Staples, I wouldn't Anyways, go there. Regardless, the, yeah. The selling point on this, in my opinion, is the support. Because we know that Google doesn't have the greatest support. Are you kidding? In the world. Wait, I wait, actually wait. had to deal with Google support for yeah. my Nexus Seven. It was fantastic. And I know. Derek, Derek, didn't you have something go I wrong with Nexus a, Seven? I didn't have a problem. You can see my my post and article about it. I didn't have a problem when I replaced my Nexus Seven, but that doesn't mean that I can't find thousands of people that have complained either. Because we can't find lots of thousands of people complaining about HP's customer service. That, you know, no, that's pretty good. They're the paragon of customer service. Real quick, I would like to say that uh, customer service. To be honest with you, either Meg Whitman is a liar or HP got this out really fast. <laughs> uh, she was talking <laughs> not that long ago about how if HP came out with a tablet soon, it would be running Windows. Yeah. And then they come out with an Android tablet, and she pretty much ruled that out, I think, four months ago. I think she ruled out Android, too, after mm -hmm. she killed WebOS. Mm -hmm. She was like, F mobile, we're sticking to Windows. Well, a year ago, HP also said we're never making another desktop computer again. And then yeah. a month later, they're like, eh. Oh, look at might. this brand new desktop we made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they actually were, they closed down plants, and, and uh, they... 
close that whole entire consumer division, and then all of a sudden, yeah, well, we never really said we were doing it forever. Yeah, yeah, we just meant for the next just week. Just for this month. We just felt yeah, like well, taking a vacation, guys. Her truths just only last either, one week. Either way, I think that this speaks volumes for Android to have a major device manufacturer, major PC de uh, server, uh, you know, desktop manufacturer make an Android tablet. The same, yeah, I, think it's good. I would say the same thing if Dell made another Android tablet. Samsung. Samsung? Is a major PC vendor that makes tablets. Lenovo. I, I don't know would, that they make tablets. Personally, but I wouldn't consider them a major PC Yeah, vendor. Lenovo makes tablets. Asus. Acer. I wouldn't consider either of those major. I think no. Acer's one of the larger PC distributors on the planet. I think all of them have kind of dabbled their feet in the water, but it speaks volumes for how successful Android is that they're doing this, but it also speaks volumes of how clueless HP has been in the last couple of years in the market because WebOS was not a bad platform. They just killed no. it with crap, really terrible hardware. And, uh, you know, if they don't compete... The hardware in the, H in the touchpad wasn't terrible. It was just badly... Hey, but, but the pre, the pre was terrible. And yeah. uh, they didn't improve on those things, but... No, if, if they want to get, get an adoption, I think they have to come up with better hardware for their money. All right, so Scott, uh, talk about the uh, Mobile World Congress awards. They every year they award to best. You know, pretty much there's, there's too many categories to list them all. Pretty much okay. everything under the sun it has an award. So let's uh, talk about some relevant ones here. All right, let's go over a little bit of history first. The in 2012, uh, best smartphone was the S2, and this year was the Galaxy S3. Good. Everybody kind of agrees upon that. Um, yeah, but whatever. I mean, the consumers believe that it's the best phone. Yeah, okay. What best is mobile their qualification for best? Best selling or best quality? Best mobile enabled the consumer electronics device, the Galaxy camera. Interesting. <laughs> uh, best mobile infrastructure, smart LTE network. Which is a product of Samsung. Uh, device, device Manufacturer of the Year, Samsung. Outstanding Overall Mobile Technology. Uh, the CTO's Choice uh, uh, was uh, Samsung as well. So Samsung actually walked away with five awards from Mobile World Congress. Best tablet in 2012 was the iPad 2. And now it is the Asus Google Nexus 7. Uh, best Consumer App, Facebook. That's wrong. <laughs> La now, yeah. last wow, year, the best consumer wrong. app, Scott, was uh, Google Maps. So that's a that's a huge change. And Google Maps works. Yeah. yeah wow. They, maybe they used Facebook's iOS native app and didn't bother using Androids Ooh, because and Facebook's Android one still sucks majorly. But, hey, hey, that's a really good point, though. I wonder what version they were using. Well, it's just it's mobile. It's all over. I mean, it's all, it's all platforms that... Yeah. Yeah, but did they just average the suckiness? So they took the <laughs> portableness of right, right. Was the iOS Android, and then they that good leveled enough it. That it makes up for how crappy it is on Android. Well, so, if, the, if the mobile website qualifies as an app, that's pretty good. So oh. the the last app, I'm actually really surprised about. Especially I, for enterprise. Yeah. yeah so yeah. The, the best enterprise app was voted to be Evernote. Now, don't get me wrong; you can do productivity. On, on uh, Evernote, so I would have assumed this award should be called Best Productivity App, but yeah. Best yeah. Enterprise App. I I do, when I think Enterprise App, I don't think of Evernote. I don't either. I think of something like Drive would be a better option than Evernote for yeah enterprise. yeah. 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 Drop, right. Dropbox has done a good job this year too. Yeah. Things like Box. I, I mean, it it's it, it, you know I we all know what Evernote is. I understand that you can use it for business, you can use it for productivity, but for example, consumer I active. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to use Evernote for work because it, you no. know it, but that no. that's, you'd use the OneNote app for Android. I just cuz that's an enterprise app. It it's just weird. So yeah, so those of you that uh, are in the you know uh, your your career takes you to some company every day that you use mobile apps uh let us know. Would you consider Evernote to be your company's, you know, enterprise best app that you use? Uh, or no, a better question to ask: Would you ever consider Evernote being in the category of an enterprise app? Yeah, yeah. it's a consumer really app. 
Is I mean, it? That, that's great. Is it better news categorized forever, as a cause... productivity app or an enterprise app? A answer that question. Oh, if we thought productivity app, I would say yeah, it's a great product productivity app. It's designed great, has great functionality. Yeah, but it's because... a consumer grade product. It's not an enterprise grade. Exactly. Product. Exactly. I don't mean I to like, diss it in any way. I think it's a perfectly good product. Yeah. It's I mean, you know just what? not enterprise grade. All I know is when we all when uh, we all decide to start a new company, we're going to start it using Evernote because it's an enterprise app. The best one of the year. So uh, besides Mobile World Congress, there was some other news floating around the the interwebs the past few days that we we covered at Android Authority. Um, so the Verizon Galaxy Nexus, the redheaded stepchild of the Nexus line, is getting an update. Soon, in quotes, air quotes. Um, Within the next six months. <laughs> yeah, so always, so this, years. a Verizon support rep took to Twitter to say that, that it's coming soon. So this says one thing, that yay, the device is going to get another update. It, it wasn't forgotten. But the most 4. interesting... 1.2 is coming. Well, yes, yeah, exactly. 4.1.2 <laughs> is coming because remember, it's four updates behind its uh, GSM counterpart. You know, it'd be awesome if they just jumped to Keylime. That'd be <laughs> rad. <laughs> oh my goodness, they would now, completely redeem themselves. Did you guys see the tweet? It actually, the 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 rep actually said, "Don't worry, you know, Samsung is going to push out the update soon." Mm -hmm. But yeah, Samsung, Samsung doesn't Chris push doesn't. out the update. I love how they point the finger of blame to people that. It yeah, doesn't. that's exactly why they did it. So, so right now, if you're mad that you don't, your Galaxy Nexus doesn't have an update, you, and you see Verizon this Verizon just said it's Samsung's fault. Ver, Verizon just said it's Samsung. So now you can be mad at Samsung when it's not Samsung's fault. <laughs> that update Verizon's is Verizon's fault, and Samsung has nothing to do with it in the slightest. It's Samsung's fault that we're the only carrier in the world that has a locked bootloader on the Galaxy S3. So don't. <laughs> Get mad at them for investing the development <laughs> effort for doing it to us. Those bastards—they put this shitty phone on our service. So, <laughs> so, so moving on uh, to other, other device news this week. Everybody knows if you watch the show, listen to the show, that this is my phone, and I love it and I hate it. We have a some weird relationship. This, uh, well, I have some some. I have some good news with this phone this week, some bad news with this phone. The, the bad news, we'll start off with that first. HTC like said on Facebook, hey, I just want to let everybody know you saw the M7 recently. It's running Sense 5. Don't worry. The One X is going to get it. The One X Plus is going to get it. The, S, the One S is going to get it. And the Butterfly is going to get Sense 5 as well. LOL, Droid DNA was not mentioned <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's that's just funny. Now it's um, a hate hate relationship. <laughs> so, so so moving on with uh now the good news for the Droid DNA, we now have a near working AOSP ROM on the on the DNA uh, radio works. It has 4G data, it has 3G data. Um, you you can make a phone call, but audio on the phone call doesn't work. Audio. So you can't well, make a phone call. So so wait, wait, wait. So you can't make a phone call. Right? It's still in development. No, I'm just saying. Progress is being made. No, you can place a phone call. This just doesn't work. Yeah, so you got to use like touch tones. Like it's, you got like Morse code or something. Oh, like, dude, that'd be fun. It's, it's like it's like movie. It's like it's like movie phone. You know. Uh, um, so it, 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 it's you know progress is being made. Uh, Chad uh, just stepped on the development team, and I'm like a giddy schoolgirl right now because I used to run his kernels back in the day. Dan actually used to work with him on kernels uh, for the Incredible back in the day. He's a good developer. I'm excited to have him have him on the DNA AOSP uh, CM10 team. Yeah, well, we should we should get him on the show. Um, so other news. Uh, so Samsung Galaxy S4 is officially coming now. Uh, Samsung announced that March 14th in, in New York City at 7 p.m. It's going to be announced. Wookie, you going to be there? Yes, I am. Very cool. Very cool. So we'll, we'll have to have you on the show uh, the following week or later that week. I haven't seen. I don't know what day of the week that is yet. Uh, uh, let me see here. It's like a look, I, I have this thing called a calendar. I think it tells me. So the fourteenth is a Thursday. Uh oh, you know that's at seven p.m. So that come, oh, come nine boy. come nine thirty. You're getting on this here, and you're you're telling us all about it. 
we'll we'll see. I might be able to hop on for a few minutes at least. I'm sure you're you going to do it from a Galaxy S4. Yeah, you better Whoa. do it from the get. You better join the hangout from the Galaxy S4. You know. <laughs> hey, can I borrow this? Okay. Uh, I don't know how much I can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what I'm going to okay. say is that I asked for a review unit when I RSVP'd to the event. Okay. And at the time, they said, we haven't officially announced anything, so we're not doing anything with review unit waiting lists. Understandable. And now it's been... No, they have yeah? officially announced, so are they doing something with yeah, those it's, lists? It's, it's hard to tell if... I mean, everybody knows it's going to be the S4, but they're being no. They very... just put out a big flyer with a four on it because right. they I mean, March Madness. <laughs> but yeah, the final four in March. No, that's what they about. meant. Right. Of I course. It's all about the basketball. This is going to be the Galaxy Blaze Four. This is not actually going to be the <laughs> premium one. This is going to be like the fourth iteration of a crappy carrier actually, phone. Actually, the graphics designer game made, made it away for free. The graphics designer say, made a mistake. Yeah, I could be to very much piece. damning myself here. Uh, when I went to the Note 2 event, I did go home with a Note 2 review unit. So hopefully that will help. That will happen at the S4 event. Okay, good. Well, well we, we look forward to well your... Must join the Hangout from an S4. We, we look forward to your, your future review, Wookie. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be awesome because, well, you just do good work, man. Well, thank you. Uh, so, Dan, we had a little bit of carrier news. Our favorite carrier is... Being awesome as usual. Yeah, right? so T-Mobile announced uh, some of their financials, and in the process of doing that, sort of revealed the fact that they have completed their LTE buildouts in Kansas City and Las Vegas. Uh, it's not yet official, which is to say they're done with the physical construction, but haven't actually publicly announced it. It's there. It's just not being used at all. Um, they're planning to have 100 million people in the country covered by the middle of this year and 200 million people covered by the end of the year. Uh, they're also turning on PCS, that's the 1900 megahertz band, HSPA Plus in Richmond, Virginia, and Orlando, Florida, as of, I think that was today, it might have been yesterday, uh, which brings them to about 144 million people covered by 1900 megahertz uh, HSPA Plus and 225 million covered total between PCS and AWS. And rumor has it that they'll be launching their LTE networks officially on March 27th, probably with more than just the two cities online by then. So the question is, is when will I ever get it? <laughs> Covered, hashtag coverage better than Derek. Should we bring that back out again? <laughs> if you, I don't, if you, well, I if you move fact, to Kansas City, you can get the best internet in America. So. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping... Uh, Somebody, somebody does something around here besides Verizon, but hey, yeah, no, well, that, that's really good. I, I like to their mobile. footprint with their LTE roll, and nobody's really expanding their footprint with their LTE roll. Out. They're rolling it out to less than their lower level services. Yeah, because that's just the way it works. Let's all just let's all just go to Kansas City, dude. Google right. Fiber, T-Mobile, LTE. All right, so uh, so who here backed? Oh yeah, last summer. Derek, you did. Just Derek? Okay. Just you. So I don't even play console games, but I thought it was a neat idea, so if I gave him 100 bucks. Um, I'm In a couple weeks, I'm going to be getting my console device. It, they announced actually today that they will start shipping them uh, March 28th. That's not so, a couple of weeks, Derek. That's four weeks. Huh? That's a month. It's a couple weeks. <laughs> That's a month. It's going to ship in a month, and then it'll be a couple of weeks from then. He's saying a couple of weeks like a couple of cookies. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, I love cookies. A, a couple means... It's a couple of weeks, like when Verizon says you're going to get Two or three, maybe four. It's like a skip and a hop. All right, whatever. A few weeks. Is that, is that better, Dan? It's really more than a few. <laughs> Several. Dan, remember, Dan, I had that mute button. Do you? I do. And he never All right. uses it. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm pretty sure I have one of those too, actually. I know you used it a few weeks ago when we did the Harlem Shake. You didn't want to participate, so you, you muted no, your no, video. That's not a mute button. That's a camera button. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I'm not that excited about it, not because I don't play console games, because I don't, but I'm not that excited about it because we've seen something better since then. You know, we've seen the Shield. 
Yeah. And the and the PlayStation Four. Yeah, oh, the game's so coming now, and the Shield's going to be like another four months. But yeah, price so point, the, the price point, the Ouya will be okay, and it'll be something to get a good perspective of for just hundred bucks. A hundred yeah. bucks, yeah. I'm not hating that I spent a hundred bucks on it. I'll, yeah, but it'll be a, you know a toy for my son, right? Um, remember that rumor, guys, uh, about Google having their own retail stores, and everybody said, "Oh, it's going to be great. They're going to push out Nexus devices. They're going to push out, you know, the Chrome Pixel. They're going to push out insert this. They're going to push out." Google Glass cookies. They're gonna they're gonna give cookies mm. out to everybody that walks in the door. Just to ruin these stores. So every everybody thought it was cool, and everybody then said, "Well, this is why they're doing it, and this is why it's good." Yes, I also saw the article saying, "Oh, they're copying Apple because obviously opening a retail store is a clearly Apple. patented idea of <laughs> Apple, and nobody has ever had the <laughs> nobody idea ever to thought of doing store it before." before. Well, thank well, Dan. Maybe that maybe they were afraid of the patents because they Andy, may have Ru- been. Andy Rubin actually said uh, this past week that nope, 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 that is not happening. Uh, the Nexus line doesn't need a retail store. Uh, and, and and I agree with them, but the Nexus line, there's more <laughs> to it. No, what the Nexus line needs is to be able to keep itself in stock. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, Nate. I remember you wrote actually a big article about why Google doesn't need retail stores. Well, I, I don't think they need them, um, and I think they've got some hurdles to jump over, like uh, supply chain and some customer service issues. Um, and by customer service issues, I mean when the Nexus 4 launched, that was a complete debacle. Disaster. Disaster. Mm-hmm. They shut the phone lines down and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they do have some hurdles to jump over. I think what's worth mentioning is Andy Rubin didn't say there will not be retail stores. He says, we have no plans for retail stores. So I'm going to put my lawyer hat on and really analyze that statement. We have no plans. Well, what are plans, first of all? And then he's talking specifically about the Nexus line. The store doesn't have to be around centered around the Nexus line. There's plenty of other products they have, and Google Glass is much better served by a retail environment and if you have retail stores, you can get the word out about fiber, which is a huge deal, and people need to know about that. So do I buy that they're not going to have retail stores? Um, no, I don't buy that. And Chromebooks. Be a you, huge think, push for that. you think they'll have little fiber hubs in various cities, basically, which is a retail store? I think there's a lot more benefit to having a store for Google than there is just to sell stuff. I I do agree with that, and I hope you're right. I I would like to see a Google store. I think it would be beneficial for you know for them pushing their brand, pushing their products. Yeah, only if they aren't like cold havens. Like and you and you have to keep in mind too. They also denied way back when that they had a social media entity coming because somebody said, "Is there something in the world called Google Circles?" And they said, "No, we don't have any product by that name." Well, they didn't have a product by that name. They still called Google Plus. Which Google Circles is a service within Google Plus, but there is no product. Yeah, so, so it won't be a it won't be a retail store to s- maybe they just won't sell Nexus devices in it, but they'll sell everything else. You know. <laughs> well, I could see them doing something like um, uh, other manufacturers do, where they open sort of sub stores within Best Buys and Staples. Yeah. And- well, they do that with Chrome Chromebooks already, Dan. Exactly. Like Best Buys, and uh, we're we're out in the UK and PC World stores. We don't have those here, I guess. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, in in various. You know, retail electronic stores. I could see them expanding that, but I don't know that they necessarily are well served by opening their very own brick and mortar stores. Why pay all that, you know, physical rent? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when online is so much more efficient, and they're already doing it online, it just uh, it, well, the only reason that Apple does it is to have that service, that customer service. But hopefully. You make a product lineup where you don't need all that kind of support with all the Google's online services anyway. So with Chrome, you're not talking about having to do backups. Yeah, unlike running around saying it just works while having 24-hour-a-day freaking training sessions so people can figure out how to make it just work. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, one thing Andy Rubin didn't deny, and he didn't confirm either. He just kind of beat around the bush. Uh, when he was asked about is Google launching a music subscription service, and he didn't say no. He just said, well, you know, it's still a new service. You know, that a lot of things can happen. You know, there's a lot of room for growth is basically what he said. 
So uh, I wouldn't say that that's a confirmation, but but furthering that that rumor, there's been there was a report actually. Um, uh, a music uh, the music industry actually came out and said Google has a huge amount of users, a huge user base, you know, and then there's the huge user base of YouTube. If they could utilize that, basically that's dollar signs for us. So <laughs> the mm -hmm. the music industry said it'd be a good idea, basically. So uh, they would do a lot better than Spotify and audio could ever. Do. I mean, think about it. You search a song and you get a little, you know, a card in Google search. And you click download or preview the song, and you got it right next to YouTube as well. Boom! People search things, and people watch YouTube videos. You think about it, right from right from YouTube. You're watching a YouTube video, and you realize you like the song, there. and you want to you want to buy it. What about the you know the integration or something where you can just click the buy button or or the you can do that now. The, yeah. Add it to your playlists or star it or for later or. No, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Like like actual like download purchase with uh, Google Wallet. And it's so on your device in the matter of two seconds. Yeah. Now, the other thing to consider with this is that Google has already changed the paradigm with the music industry in terms of licensing. With the most recent uh, big labels that they added to the Play Store, they brokered global license, single global licenses with those companies rather yeah. than the sort of industry practice up until these particular contracts has been you make a... USA license and a Canada one and a Europe one and you've got 47 licenses with each distributor of, of records. Google has already changed the paradigm on that and so if they can work that out with the rest of them, that creates you know 12 licenses that they sign with these different companies and can then easily distribute worldwide filtered straight through google.com. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think that that's that that's probable. Uh, you know, I I really think that uh, that they could utilize that in the music industry and, and make it successful. So, so Nate, you've uh, you had the Chromebook Pixel for a few days. Uh, you're obviously, as I said earlier on the show, you're in the Hangout from your Pixel. Uh, you're going to be doing a, a full review here uh, shortly on the Pixel, right? Yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be writing a full review, and it's going to be over the course of a week now. And I have really put this thing through its paces in a lot of different areas, so it's going to be a really full in-depth review and not like some of the other reviews where they have it an hour and say, I don't like it, so yeah, it'll yeah, be nice. You've been using it for a whole week, so you can actually give it a true review. I've been using it absolutely exclusively for a full week. Good. Cool. Alright, well, um, you guys can find us on YouTube. Watch us here on YouTube as you're doing or listening. Um, you can find us on SoundCloud. Uh, AndroidAuthority.com. If you want to scroll down to the bottom right, there's a section called On Air. Uh, after every show, we do a post about what we talked about. Um, we have an IRC channel that we are currently in. That we are. That, that we need to really start using better. And we are using. We, we are watching. I'm waving to you guys right now. Hey, Paul Nerd, 1985. And, and we're going to start getting in there pre-show too, so we can chat pre-show as well. Um, yeah, and uh, Podbean as well. <laughs> cool, cool. Oh, all right. So, yeah, so f check us out on the web and watch for my uh, fancy giveaway. Watch for Nate's Pixel Review. And uh, you guys have a good night. Good evening. Take it easy, guys.